Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today we're going to go over how to learn to be a software QA tester. Everybody wants to learn to be a QA tester for their own particular reasons, whether it's for the paycheck, they want a career change, or they just like to break things. Whatever your reason is, that's up to you. I really don't care. But once you figure out that you want to be a QA tester, you have to decide how you will learn the required information to get a job in the QA field. There are three realistic routes that you can use to learn information. University slash college, be self-taught, or use a boot camp. First, let's talk about universities and college. Traditionally, this is the way that everybody learns how to do anything in the tech space. You get a two or four year degree from a university and then use your diploma as your entryway to get a job. If you want to go the automation testing route, college might be a good option for you because you can get the fundamentals of coding and programming down. Although this requires the largest learning commitment, having the degree on your resume can potentially help you get more interviews faster. You should also take advantage of the networking aspect of university with your classmates. All of your classmates are there to get a job eventually. So if you network with them now, if they get a job later on, they may be able to connect you to get a job also in their company. Also network online. Create a LinkedIn profile. Look for alumni at your school and connect with them. They may be able to help give you career advice, mentor you, or may know a company that's possibly hiring they can be a fit for. While you're in university, don't be afraid to interact with people of different majors outside of your major because you never know who they may know or what they may need in the future. For example, about two years after I graduated from university, I was on Instagram one day and I got a message from one of my old friends back in college. She messaged me and said, hey, my dad has a law firm and they need a website built. I know you have a computer science degree and you do coding, can you help him out please? Web development wasn't even my particular focus, but I could figure out how to make a website. And she asked if I could do it on WordPress, which I never used before, but I figured I could learn how to do that and have a new client now. Ever since then, they've been an ongoing client with me for our scheduled maintenance and website updates. So now, because I was sociable in college and networked, I have extra side income coming every month from a connection I made. And if I wanted to, I can put that experience on my job resume. And I also now have a company in person to use as a reference for future jobs. So don't underestimate networking in college. For the pros we have, having a formal degree on your resume is still required by some jobs. As I just mentioned, you can network with classmates and other people which may help you in the job search down the road. You have a structured course and curriculum. Some schools have internship connections and alumni connections, and also many schools have job fairs. Now let's talk the cons. Traditional colleges can get very expensive. However, some colleges now offer a more affordable online program. The two to four year time commitment that it takes to receive a diploma. Some schools teach outdated information. Some schools have general education requirements, which may have no benefit to you for your actual career. For example, when I was in college, I had to get art class as a general requirement. That art class was harder than a lot of my regular coding classes, which doesn't make sense. I'm not going to school to be an artist, I'm going to school for tech. And last but not least, many schools don't have a specific manual or admission QA course curriculum. Now let's discuss the self-taught route. This option is the most budget-friendly one. Usually, you can learn everything within a year, and if you try hard enough, you can learn everything for either free or at a very cheap price. Use websites such as Udemy, Skillshare, and YouTube as resources for your self-learning process. This, however, is not as easy as it sounds. There's a lot of information out there and you don't know what's valid and what's not, what you should focus on. So possibly buying a course might be the best option for you for the self-taught route. Courses can range in prices, but will be more affordable than going to a university and going to a boot camp. You may also want to join some type of online community of other people trying to learn as well. That way, if you have questions or are confused, they may be able to help you out. This could be a Discord group or a group Facebook chat. 
The self-taught route requires less learning time than a university degree, but can be hard to get a job once you are finished. The pros? You learn on your own time and schedule at your own speed. It's budget friendly. You get to choose what tools you want to learn how to use. So usually with boot camps and with university, they're saying, hey, you're gonna learn how to use this tool and this programming language. But if you're self-taught, you can choose which one you wanna learn or which you feel is best fit for you. And now the cons. You must be very disciplined to keep up with the learning consistently. It is easy to get lost in all the information from different sources and feel overwhelmed. Not having an instructor or person to ask questions to can become very frustrating. And finally, you must make your own curriculum or learning guide unless you find a course that does it for you. And last but not least, boot camps, which seems to be the most popular route in today's world. Boot camps are like a mix of the self-taught route and a university. Most boot camps last a few months and can range in price drastically depending on how reputable the camp is and if it's in person or not. Boot camps, just like universities, should also be used as a networking tool. Inquire about where people who have graduated from the boot camp work now. If they are doing a good job, that company may come back to get more graduates from that boot camp. Just like universities, you should network with your classmates in boot camps also. Just in case they get a job, they may be able to refer you also for that same company. But before you join any boot camp, make sure you do your research. Try to find the reviews, check the curriculum, make sure they have the core things that you need to get a job. Ask them what's the usual job process after they finish graduating. How soon do people find jobs after graduating? Just like the self-taught route, this requires less learning time than a university degree, but can be harder to get a job once you are finished for the small percentage of jobs who still want a traditional degree. For the pros, we have you learn up-to-date job-ready skills, the networking connections, a live instructor to get feedback and ask questions to, and a structured course. And now for the cons, some boot camps can get very pricey. Depending on your location, it may be hard to find a reputable boot camp. It is hard to vet newer, smaller boot camps that may be more affordable because they may not have many reviews from graduates yet. And some boot camps have limited curriculums. So whatever route you choose is up to you. You have to weigh what's best for you financially and time-wise. But whatever you choose, don't overthink it. Just jump in and get started on your QA journey. Don't keep just procrastinating and then months and years later, you're like, wow, I wish I would have started a long time ago. If you plan to go the self-taught route, I'll create a video in the near future with guidelines on what to focus on to help you on your journey. I'll also try to create a course to help you, but please subscribe and stay tuned for that. If you need help right now on your QA journey, check out my book, QA Must Know Vocabulary. If you got any value from this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, don't forget to learn something new today.